evening namaskara to everybody i'm nice to see all of you here and uh, we just start it's going to be a very informal kind right i mean please feel free or we can stop you can ask questions or if you want we can ask later uh, whatever you want like uh, okay so we start now yeah so yeah so just for so how many of you know about chitara or have you heard or or yeah okay what uh, what like what do you know like you know which part or something of course we saw the map <laughs> yeah okay fine we'll go ahead so as you know it's from karnataka it's a dying art so sifriya is trying to revive it and preserve this art form along with the other uh, craft what the divaru community and other community are doing it and these are the other area this is the shumaga district so normally it is sagar soraba and tirthali these are the places where it's still uh, uh, going on a little bit in a very 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 small way but uh, mostly it's in sagar in and around sagar villages uh, uh, taluk yeah, next one <coughs> So Chitara has been uh, practiced by other communities also, but basically by Devaru community, Devaru community. Okay, so and uh, so they are basically agrarian community, and they are uh, majorly uh, they worship water and nature, nothing but this, and they take care of nature so much. We all have to learn from them, and they cultivate rice, sugarcane, areca nut, and they also weave mats. So it's all here. Whatever is uh, some of the things you can always afterwards. Come Come and have a look and ask me questions, or if you want, we can stop here and ask whatever way you all want. Okay? Yeah. The next one, please. <clears throat> so they are matrical, matriarchal society, and they manage the finances. In fact, uh, 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 they are very powerful. When you go to, when you travel to the villages, you can see the men are a bit subdued, and the women you can see are with authority, which is quite uh, nice to see and very rare also. Like, yeah, and of course they are extremely hardworking, and they till the farm, they weave and sell the mats, baskets, gather the resources from the forest, and uh, so with a meager income, they try. to educate the children so basically they call the shots everything like and so this power relationship between men and women is also manifested in social practices like marriage ceremonies where uh, yeah please come in please so, so where the bride's family commands high respect so they call the shots again over there yeah next one so they are closely knit community with no social rivalry which is again very amazing to uh, to observe and then of course proud of traditions and uh, they are very proud of their traditions socially bonded and culturally integrated by unique customs and rituals so these practices reflect in their interaction and profound relationship with the environment for example bhumi bhumi hunni mein butti so um this is uh this is a, a ritual they do it before the harvest and it's equivalent to i think some of you may know may not know uh, we call it balya shastra or simanta you know when the women is first time pregnant they, they do all that and make the delicacies and give it to her and etc so the similar way they do it of course these are very mini basket but they of course the baskets are very big and uh, they prepare the basket may prepare the delicacies from 3 4 days before hand they go to the field and offer this to mother earth and then they do the harvest and then they eat there and come back so that is a, another ritual so <clears throat> so that traditionally i mean the these traditional ritualistic practices are incomplete of course without the art practice of chitara next one so this is a, another chitara you, you all can go and have this we have done it at uh, ignca indira gandhi national center for arts kengutta circle bangalore so sometime you can just go have a look and uh, so uh, this is called hasegode chitara papli chitara so this is a double marriage happening so this is the palanquin and there are a lot of uh, uh, symbols and it has meaning and it has names and uh, this is uh, 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 we call it early uh, uh, people leave so there is a thing that uh, when the women is pregnant they are sh they are asked to go around for walking morning and evening because it produces a lot of oxygen so it's healthy so so like each one has a meaning and uh, and they have a symbol for that and uh, once go can we go back yeah so this is the palanquin these are the couples can you see am i and these are the fans for the couple and these are the people carrying the palanquin and these are the instrumentalists yeah next one 
So uh, Chitara is never a uh, profession for them. It's more of an art, uh, 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 this thing, uh, you know, more of uh, art uh, and uh, beautifying their place and uh, taking out their emotions through the art and trying to express their feelings through this art form. So usually women get together and paint for two to four hours. That is after they come back. So basically they're all farmers. So they have their housework in the early morning, go to the farm, do their farming, come back in the evening, again do the housework, cooking, etc. And then they all sit and do the painting. So usually about two to four uh, hours, depending on that. And it takes about four to five days to complete a, uh, to a painting. And uh, paintings are always, as you can watch, it's always on the straight line, either horizontal or vertical, it's never crooked. So they can never do the crooked. So crooked lines all means it's a, uh, it's an, uh, they should not uh, have the crooked line in the beginning. And if so, they raise the whole thing. It's very inauspicious. So, so far in their history, I believe it has never happened. So, that's another record. Like. And then the paintings are a matter of pride and reflect their identity. So, one can look at the painting and they recognize the artist. So, one has to be so much an expert, you know, when you see that, you know, okay, this is from this person or this lady or whatever. The women with, with good paintings get do, uh, good marriage proposals. So even to this day it happens, though it's small, yeah, very, very few artists are there, still it is. Men, highly appreciative, please note this, and take pride in the paintings. Don't mind if the women fall short of housework and due to their paintings. For women, creation of paintings is full of beauty, joy, and creativity. One second, I cannot go. So this is again uh, Hase Gode Shittara, and uh, can I go this side? Can I go this way? Can I move? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you can see on the right and left like a hand. So that is called Madanakai. So that is a hand of God. You know, God of romance. You must be knowing Rati and Man. So they protect the couple. Otherwise, the same. This is one single palanquin here, and uh, they again the same uh, uh, the musician. And on the top, you see two birds over there. So they are called the Godina Haki, which is seen in those area, and. Uh, they protect the house, you know, they, they all go in the morning. And so the birds are there. When they come back in the evening, they see the bird. So for them, this bird is taking care of their houses. So that means happiness. This bird, Gudina Haki, it, it uh, uh, stands for happiness for them. And so things like that. And uh, uh, this is called uh, Terina Chittara. In every village and town, you know, every year they have a chariot pulling festival. So this represents that. And these are the people pulling the chariot. And this is of the God. So till recently, they don't have the concept of a, a Ganesh or Ishwara or anything like that. They just keep a stone. So that is the God. But now it is changed. So that is why they always paint like this. Next one. Yeah. So these are some of the symbols which you can see here. So they rely on the environment for the creation of paintings. And they use eco-friendly natural resources. I'll uh, show you and explain to you also after that. So they ground rice for white color, roasted rice for black, and gurige seed for yellow, and uh, brush called, uh, the uh, natural brush called uh, pundinaru. So this we say, and you can see they, they normally paint what they see in the nature, and what they use day to day in their agricultural uh, thing, fields, etc. So paintings done during marriage depict a married couple in a palanquin, signifying their opulent journey into new life, which you saw, you know, the palanquin that time. Next one, please. Uh, so this is how they make their colors. So they don't use any artificial colors. They make their own colors, which is very laborious. So for this red, so they, um, there's a red earth. The shade is so beautiful over there. So they uh, bring it and they pound it, they grind it, they seed it. So it is here. So this is in a, a solid form, but not normally it is, everything is in a, uh, gravy form like. Yeah, next one. So for the black, uh, they roast the rice in a very slow fire. Then it comes uh, white into brown or brow brownish and then it turns into black and then they make the powder. Next one. So the white, uh, it is the white, for the white, they soak the rice for four days, change the water every day or every night. They grind it, they sieve it and the white is ready. 
So uh, for the yellow, the, as, like I said, it, there is a uh, tree in the forest. It's called Gurige. I don't know the English name, sorry. So Gurige seed, Gurige tree. Uh, so they go to the forest, get those. So that's available in April and May only. So they bring that. And uh, of course, you can see they get the powder done. I mean, get the powder. And the peel is edible. So they make oil out of it. Yeah. So this is the brush. Oh, I hope you can all see. It looks like, when you see it, it looks like a silk thread, you know, like that. So this is again, uh, this plant is grown near the river. Again, a laborious procedure to get this. And so they bring it, soak it in the water and take it out and make the brushes. So this is the one. You can always afterwards come and have a look at it, suppose, yeah? And, oh, and can I go so this is how they make the brush out of this. And uh, you can see the using over there. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Next one, please. So these are the different forms of chitara. Like one of some of the, you saw this, and you saw the uh, the double version of it. So different versions, and they can all, they also do it to the wall, to the sorry door frame and to the window frame. Next one. So this is the lifestyle of them. So you can see this house over there. You know, this is a grass, a particular grass. So they they cover the house with that grass, which keeps it cooler, cool in summer and uh, uh, warm in winter. And this is a basket to, uh, to collect the fish. So, and everything, of course, they weave and everything, the nature and things like that. Yeah, next one. So, um, so this is a paddy toren, which they put it, it uh, hang in the puja room or in the front, uh, front door of their house. So where when you pass by the, the paddy touches your head, supposed to be auspicious for that. And also the sparrows and the birds, they come and take it. So it's, uh, it's a very nice uh, idea, you know, like, and uh, this is, uh, they're also good at the wood carving. Uh, this particular one is used at the time of marriage for uh, doing the arti for the couple. And this, of course, they're embroidery very close to Kasuti. I think you all know Kasuti, right? The Karnataka embroidery Kasuti. It's very close, but not as refined as Kasuti, but it's very close. It, it is Kasuti. And this is the mat they use it. Again, you can see all the geometrical uh, design. And uh, I'll show you later. And uh, this is again natural colors. So these are the basket which I showed you. So this is the latest one which they have done. The, uh, one of the artists have done a lampshade. And um, this is the, uh, we call it basinga. At the time of marriage, they tie to the bride and the groom. And uh, that is made out of, so So this is grown near the river again. Because it's along this thing. And you can see the brown part. So it's very thin. So you take it out and then it becomes like this. And then they make it like this. So this is another craft. Okay. Uh, pit or solar wood. Next one, please. So these are the, again, how, how all, we're trying to see how all we can take it forward and what, not changing their uh, anything much, but at the same time, little bit, where we can adapt. So this is the sari palu and this is the stole. And this one lady made it in the beads. So this, uh, this is one, uh, one game, old, uh, olden days, I don't know if you all know. We call it aluguli mane. You have those red seeds and you play. So that one. Next one. So this is Ishan Kosla. He he, um, his expertise is in taking the uh, folk art and try to uh, do the typography. So this is his work, done by uh, of course the Chitara artist. So this is a lady called Asha Badami. She's from Karnataka, but settled down in Delhi. She's a mathematician. So she specializes. In, she travels to the villages and. Uh, in search of folk arts, and she sees which folk art can be adopted to mathematics for which class. So Chittara, she found that to adopt it to the fourth standard. Unfortunately, this book is not available anymore with a limited edition. So now coming to Sifria, it's a non-profit organization committed to us building awareness of and preserving indigenous art practices through research and development. Then, of course, while safeguarding the ecological aspects of practice that mutually benefit them and the environment that surrounds them. Uh, Sifria aims to educate its socio-cultural contribution to their community as an as a art and traditional practice. Provision for training by exponents, especially older generation with higher knowledge of the art. 
So these are some of the schools which we had done the workshops. This is a valley school, and this is another school in the village near Gulbarga. <coughs> Next. So, and also to assess, document, awareness of the artistic and socio-cultural values of Chittara practice. Then archiving aesthetics of the practice and all relevant information in textual and audiovisual format. And we plan to bring out design, uh, design directory of Chittara art, which, uh, which could be used for the public awareness and for teaching. Thank you. So uh, basically, I just uh, introduced Chittara, um, uh, uh, main features of the Chittara, like how it is made, where it is made, and the colors that are used and the natural colors and the brushes, brush that are used. And all the other art forms, uh, sorry, the craft, form, craft things they make along with the uh, Chitara paintings and how skilled uh, these uh, artisans are. And, um, and, the, and the students, uh, they were from this journal, uh, Dhyanand Sagar College journalism students who had come. And uh, they were very happy because uh, uh, this was the first time they were quite exposed to this kind of an art form. And most of them asked very pertinent questions. Uh, for example, they want to know like why this is not known as the other art forms like Varli or something else and what can be done and uh, is there any products available uh, outside, uh, is there any shop which sells this kind of product and uh, of course how, how old this art form is and uh, when when exactly the uh, the the, uh, the they start practicing this art form and when they can uh, actually do the art, this art. Etc. Et on these lines. Thank you.